Hello there. Good morning. Afternoon. Yes, it's afternoon. Now. Would you support, would this government support uh, Britain's efforts to free its hostages in the Falklands in exchange for Mrs. Thatcher's support for freeing American hostages in Iran? You've asked a, a question in a way about a particular facet of it. Let me just answer it in a little broader context. It's a very difficult situation for the United States because we're friends with both of the countries engaged in this dispute. And we stand ready to do anything we can to help them. And what we hope for and would like to help in doing is have a peaceful resolution of this uh, with uh, no forceful action or no bloodshed. And uh, uh, to that extent, uh, we support the resolution that's already in the United Nations, that there be a withdrawal of forces and we resolve this at the UN. Mr. President, Mr. British Television News. Have you spoken to Prime Minister Thatcher this morning? No, but uh, we have. Re I received a message from her uh, with regard to the appointment of the new minister, uh, or foreign minister. Uh, what will uh, you do if what uh, else did Britain? She have to tell you? What? Well, she appreciated very much our efforts and my attempt to. Uh, Is America prepared to offer military assistance if the British ask for it? Again, as I said, we're friends of both sides and in this, and uh, we're going to try strive for, and I, I think that they will be willing to meet in the idea of a peaceful resolution. Mr. President, Mr. President are you meeting with the Argentine foreign minister who's here today talking to the Organization of American States? No, I don't think, uh, no, he, there isn't any meeting of that kind on the, on the schedule. Mr. President, Britain, the British government has threatened to use force if uh, diplomacy fails and it's regarded as a serious threat in Britain. What would your position be, sir, if uh, diplomacy did Well, fail? you're getting into a hypothetical question that I hope I never am faced with. Both sides have threatened with the use of force, as is evidenced with Argentina's military landing there. And uh, I just don't think that it's an issue that should come to that point. Mr. President, why do you think your polls have gone down so much recently? Well, they have followed a pattern that's been historically true of every president. And uh, uh, whatever the degree might be, uh, I guess, depends on the pollsters. I think there's been quite a drumbeat of criticism that has gone largely unanswered by us with regard to some of the programs that I've advocated. And of course, there is the unhappiness that exists for all of us in the, in the present recession. Uh, but as I've said, I think the polls are only as good as the, at the time they're taken. Well, do they worry you? Well, when you say it's largely unanswered, sir, do you mean that, that it ha the answer hasn't been uh, reported adequately or you haven't been making it adequately? What do you, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I think in the debate, uh, it's, it's true that there has been far more criticism of the plan, and that is more newsworthy when someone stands up with a new viewpoint and attacks a... Uh, facets of the program and we have submitted our budget and while we're now continuing in meetings with them to hear uh, what alternatives might be proposed uh, there is much news in us just continuing to say well <laughs> we uh, we're still supporting our program Isn't it about time for some uh, some new move on the part of the White House we hear that you may be willing to make some cuts in the defense program the as I've said, finally, there are meetings uh, that have been going on, and I've had people from my staff up there uh, in, the, uh, in the place of, of observers or witnessing or hearing of what is being proposed uh, between the legislators, both Democrat and Republican. It so far has not reached a point in which it comes to me with any concrete proposals of one kind or another. How about defense? You're willing to make some cuts in defense? I have said, I, I have said that um, any government program obviously has areas where uh, savings can be made by management changes and so forth. And I am open to any suggestions of that kind. However, the basic program of upgrading and building weapon systems that we need in order to close the window of vulnerability, um, I will uh, 
I, I would have to oppose that. We Mr. can't President, send that I kind of a message. Say that, uh, they disagree with your assessment that the United States is behind the Soviet Union. But beyond that, they say you were wrong to say it because it gives a perception of weakness. Are you sorry you said it? No, I'm not sorry I said it because I think as long we know for sure the Russians know that. I think the American people ought to be able to know everything they know. Mr. President, uh, is that the impression that we are weak and therefore no. doesn't it uh, it's been said. It's been said over and over again many times. It's been said for the uh, last few years that we were in a deteriorating position militarily in comparison to the, to the Soviet Union. But nobody's you think ever that said, will give that they could deliver impetus? a second strike. Do you really believe that? That has been published in articles by various people commenting on what should happen. But let me make one point about this. The idea is that we must have a deterrent. Our goal is peace. And to have peace, we must have a deterrent that would prevent someone from adventuring aggressively in the world using uh, nuclear weapons. And for one point, with regard to our inferiority, we are presently negotiating that in Geneva. The fact that the Soviet Union has 300 intermediate missiles with 900 warheads aimed at Europe and can hit the Middle East and North Africa, and there is nothing to counter them, and our allies have asked us for cruise missiles and Pershings as a deterrent to be stationed in those countries in Western Europe, to be deployed there, and we have agreed to do that. Now there is the greatest proof of a superiority. They already have their SS-20s, 4s and 5s in place. Although lately they have said that they're withdrawing the fours and fives, which are an older and lesser missile. We are negotiating from a standpoint of something we yet have to do in providing those missiles, but which we won't do if they will agree to take theirs out. I think that I think that at the moment, the on the uh, strategic intercontinental ballistic program on our triad. I think that we do. Those people who say that, well, we have something of a deterrent now, yes, I think so too. Be can, uh, they, can they strike us with impunity? I think I spoke of that the other night, that uh, yes, we would have surviving missiles in our submarines, airborne of those planes that were airborne at the time of such an attack. Their missiles are aimed at our, at our silos, our ballistic missiles, land-based missiles. Um, but uh, would our retaliation result in uh, further devastation to the United States? And this, so I think I made a clear look. I tell you something. Let me give you the answer. Tomorrow in Georgetown, uh, Secretary Haig is going to be making a speech on this entire subject of nuclear deterrence and the nuclear power. So I recommend that you well, hear his speech. What? Your own Labor Department said last Friday in analyzing the new unemployment statistics, unemployment rate going up, that this was evidence of further deterioration in the economy. You have said that we are, that recovery is just around the corner. Well, not Which that. I've said we're in the trough, the bottoming out of a recession. And one of the characteristics of being in the trough is, if you look back at all the other recessions we've had since World War II, you will find that one of the characteristics is that employment lags behind, and very often in that trough, there is a continued increase in unemployment for a while. So you disagree that this is evidence of further deterioration in the economy? No, there may even be more unemployment because I guess that's why they call it a trough. Sir, are you concerned, are you concerned uh, that many members of Congress are saying that you will not have a budget until there's a land up session of Congress? It might be another six months. Not have a budget until we haven't had a budget for two years, really. Uh, <coughs> the no, I and we're not that far behind schedule. We. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've presented this budget earlier than we did last year, and uh, I look forward to progress being made as soon as they come back from the re Easter recess. Uh, that's why we're negotiating so fast. What about a summit meeting with House and Senate leadership on the this budget? Uh, the, uh, 
I think that that would uh, that that will be a part of the procedure before we finally arrive at a budget. Let me just say in closing, though, since we can't take any more questions here, and uh, we were on that very big subject of nuclear weapons and all. I'm, as you know, in June, early June, we'll be going to Europe for a meeting uh, with the uh, European Economic uh, uh, Council, the leaders, the heads of state of European countries. I will be meeting uh, with the Pope in Rome. And then I will be returning, and at the same time, you know, in June and early July, the United Nations is having uh, its meeting on uh, arms control. And I will be returning and addressing uh, that conference at the United Nations myself. And I hope very much that President Brezhnev uh, will be on hand to do the same thing and address the same group. I think that this whole idea that I've been talking about since back in the campaign of uh, arms reduction, arms control, uh, is one of the most important things that is facing us. And uh, as I say, I hope that uh, we'll both be able to address the, the conference. If he does come, will there be a summit meeting? meeting? Very bad health. Thank you. Uh, I've, we've had no confirmation of anything of that kind. Would you like to meet with him? Right? Uh, yes, time. if he, I, I will answer that one. If, naturally, head of state that's here in our own country, yes, I would very much think that he and I would have a meeting. You're proposing an effective summit here. Huh? Well, the imagery that you bring up with that, whether that means a full-blown summit conference, no, I think that if he is here and we both address that subject, I think it would be well if he and I had a talk. That will be in June, June, in June, in June. New York. June. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. 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 If we can... If we can be of help in doing that, yes. Anything that would bring a peaceful solution to what seems to be a, an unnecessary disagreement. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. 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 At the Hilton Hotels, you know, I was I was speaking to that group last year. I've got to speak again. Do you have any fear and trepidation about going back? No, but I'm wearing my oldest suit today. Thank you very much. Lights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, these are going to do one thing, if you will all remember. I leave every press conference, as I told you before, with a great feeling of guilt about the unrecognized... Hey, uh, you got to oh, open a trap door? That's, one, <laughs> that's a part of the new rules. <laughs> there will absolutely be no questions no, sir, in the you photo You given us said no answers for you. <laughs> <laughs> you would not answer. They carefully, and I think wisely, did not say there would be no questions. <laughs> We can still ask questions. It's just that you may or may not. That's answer. correct. Okay, you can, you but sure I can sit there with a bar of soap, a pan of water <laughs> in my hand, uh, ready to wash anyone's mouth out. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How frequently do you want to meet with us in this fashion? Every day. Thank <laughs> you.